Chapter 10, An Indian Named Tonto When I was a child, I loved a TV show called The Lone Ranger. It's a show about a cowboy in the Old West who always caught the bad guys. The Lone Ranger was super cool. He always wore a black mask to disguise his real identity. He rode a beautiful white horse named Silver. In my imagination, I used to sometimes pretend that I was the Lone Ranger, a hero who would save the world, or at least my portion of it, from those who would seek to do wrong. One really interesting thing about the Lone Ranger is that there was this awesome Indian named Tonto who was his sidekick. He was always there to be his companion and to help him out in times of trouble. When I think about trying to live the Christian life in today's world, the Lone Ranger speaks to me. No, not out loud, that would be weird. I guess I should rather say that the Lone Ranger inspires me, because even though his name was the Lone Ranger, he still needed Tonto. Get it? Well, let me explain. I think that in one way, each of us might consider ourselves Lone Rangers. God has given us the gift of free will, and it is ultimately up to us how we use that gift. We're free to do whatever we want with our time, talent, and treasure, and we're responsible for our own lives and the choices that we make. Even so, I believe that in order to be truly successful and happy in this life, we need help, just like the Lone Ranger needed Tonto. Without Tonto, there were some messes that the Lone Ranger would not have been able to get out of. And there were lots of other problems that the Lone Ranger was able to avoid because Tonto had his back. Over the course of the past several years, this notion of the Lone Ranger needing Tonto has completely revitalized and deepened my relationship with God. The Lone Ranger was smarter than I am. He knew all along that he needed Tonto, but it took me far too long to figure out that, like the Lone Ranger, I need a Tonto too. Actually, I need lots of Tontos in my life. This principle of depending upon others to help me deepen my relationship with God is what I'm going to call spiritual accountability. But I'll warn you right now that it's not for wimps, weaklings, or the faint of heart. And while it's very challenging, spiritual accountability has become one of the most valuable tools in my spiritual toolbox. In fact, it's a tool that I found to be absolutely essential if I want to grow continually deeper in my relationship with Jesus, as well as in my relationships with other key people in my life. Spiritual accountability is a very unique way of relating to others that I believe God wants each one of us to experience. It can be with one person, several people, or a group. In this chapter, I'm going to use the term accountability partner for the sake of simplicity. But keep in mind, as I said, that we can relate this way with several people or in a group setting. An accountability partner is someone to whom I give permission to encourage, challenge, and question me about every aspect of my personal, spiritual, and moral integrity. Such a relationship is difficult because it requires a decision to be totally transparent and completely vulnerable with another human being, something that most of us Lone Rangers would prefer not to do. However, the reason for having an accountability partner is so that we can constantly be growing in spiritual maturity, which I hope is a goal that we all have. Choosing an accountability partner should be done carefully and prayerfully, but the bottom line is this. It simply must be someone who cares about you deeply and that you can trust to keep a secret, since much of what we share with an accountability partner is deeply personal and very private. This person should also ideally be the kind of person that you plan on being close to throughout the years, rather than just someone who's a friend for a season. Accountability partners should be mask-free people willing to ask us the tough questions, but always out of a deep love and a desire to help you attain the ultimate goal of heaven. An accountability partner can be a peer or can be a trusted adult like a priest, religious sister, or youth minister. My strong personal opinion is that an accountability partner should be someone of the same sex, never a member of the opposite sex since so much of what we share within this relationship is about sensitive personal topics, including issues related to our sexuality. Since accountability partners help us to grow into Christian womanhood or manhood, this kind of sharing is best done with the same sex, 
since we men can only learn how to be real men from other men, and vice versa for the women. So obviously, an accountability partner should not be a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife. And this is a great thing, because when a relationship with an accountability partner is completely open and honest, it will actually enhance a person's dating or marriage relationships. Because anyone who is accountable to another human being will gradually become more spiritually healthy, more emotionally healthy, more connected to God, and therefore a more loving person. A relationship with an accountability partner is one that is usually different from a relationship with a spiritual director, which is also important for spiritual growth, because a spiritual director is usually older and more mature in faith, while an accountability partner can be a peer. And, while most people decide for themselves how often they meet with a spiritual director, an accountability partner hopefully will be available 24-7. Additionally, in spiritual direction there's usually a specific focus on one's relationship with God, while accountability partners can ask you about anything. Finally, spiritual direction is often a more professional relationship, like a spiritual physician you see for periodic checkups. An accountability partner can be more of a like-minded friend who's given permission to check up on you at any time at all. Areas of accountability can include, but are certainly not limited to, our prayer life, our thought life, the quality and depth of our relationships, our moral integrity, and our sexual purity. Brutal honesty is required. An accountability partner is someone who helps you through the process of overcoming your sinful nature, just like a sponsor helps someone going through a 12-step program to overcome their addiction. The first step in any good recovery program is to admit that we have a problem. And so an accountability partner is someone with whom I'm willing to share my problems. For me, sharing my personal struggles with at least one other person, in addition to the priest I meet with for the Sacrament of Reconciliation, is very important because it keeps me humble. My father-in-law is fond of encouraging God's people to be brutally honest. I've heard him say things like, it's tempting to be vague, saying things like, I've had impure thoughts. It's tougher, but much more freeing to be specific. I lusted. I masturbated. I viewed porn. It's important that we call sin what it is. So, Are you willing to take inventory? Are you willing to be brutally honest as to what keeps you from a deeper relationship with God? Is it an inconsistent prayer life, a lack of scripture reading, laziness, or dysfunctional relationships? Or is it something else? Ask God to show you and he will. And while you're talking to God, ask him this. God, do you want me to have an accountability partner? If so, who do you think it should be? Would you give me courage to pursue this so that I can grow closer to you and become a happier and healthier person? Faithfulness and Consistency Accountability does not work well unless we're committed to meeting with our accountability partner faithfully on a consistent basis. If we're held accountable only once in a while, it's almost the same as not being held accountable at all. One of the things I love about my accountability brothers and my men's prayer group is that we meet every two weeks, and we're committed to make this group a priority. I won't allow myself to randomly skip a meeting for some lame reason or because I've been spiritually struggling. Accountability always helps me, even when it hurts me, since it gives me the opportunity to be honest with God, myself, and at least one other person on a regular basis. Obstacles to accountability. A big reason that many of us shy away from accountability is pride. We hate to admit, even to ourselves, that we need help. Another reason we might shy away from accountability is because we lack real friendships. In today's world, many friendships are based upon a common activity, like playing a sport. But a true friend that you can really trust can be hard to find. If pride is your issue, ask God to humble you and then look out because he will. And if you honestly feel like that you don't have deep friendships with someone that you can really trust, I want to encourage you to join a youth group or a prayer group or a Bible study, since good people like that often can be found in such groups. And if no such group is available, you might consider asking your parish priest or another trusted adult in your community to keep you accountable. 
Finally, if there's really no such person in your life that you think you can trust with your heart, ask God to send someone your way. Then keep your eyes and your heart open because God will answer that prayer. Specifically, regarding sexual purity. Though there can be many dimensions to spiritual accountability, I want to focus some attention on the area of sexual purity because I believe that sexual impurity is the number one obstacle that keeps most men and many women in today's world from enjoying an awesome relationship with God because of the guilt and shame involved. Because of the often hidden dimension of sexual sin, very few people ever talk about it. Yet sexual temptation is everywhere in the form of suggestive jokes and conversations, tight or skimpy clothing, and the increasingly sexualized content of the media, magazines, movies, music, television, cable, and the internet. To highlight just one aspect of this problem, check out this statistic from a recent study. 42% of internet users aged 10 to 17 surveyed have viewed online pornography in the past year. With all of this sexual temptation out there, what are we to do? Sadly, many people give up and choose impurity. However, I hope that you want more and are unwilling to settle for less. The road God calls us to travel is difficult, but who wants to be a wimp caving into every temptation that they face? Wouldn't you rather be a warrior in this battle against evil striving for victory, honor, and glory? I know I would. In my opinion, there's nothing like an accountability partner to help you restore and maintain your moral integrity and sexual purity. Identify your triggers. As you begin the process of accountability, especially in the area of sexuality, I'd like to encourage you to consider whether there are certain times or places where temptation to be impure is more likely to occur. When I was growing up, I was asked to memorize an act of contrition to pray during confession. One of the great lines of that excellent prayer is, I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin. So, what's the near occasion of sin for you? Take inventory. Is there a certain person or group of people that you hang out with who influence you negatively? Are there certain channels that you have access to on cable that show sexual content? Are there DVDs in your home that cause you to lust or have impure thoughts? Do you have a TV or a computer in your room that tempts you to view inappropriate things? Is your time of temptation late at night when everyone else is in bed? When you're babysitting at a particular home? Is it early in the morning, late at night, in the shower? Are you more lustful when you listen to certain music or certain artists? Men, do you need to throw away your Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue or stop looking at the Victoria's Secret catalog? Are there posters of women in your room that you should take down? I encourage you to be a man and be honest about what might lead you to be less than a real man. Ladies, do you read romance novels that you know you shouldn't? or read articles in certain magazines that are about sexual things? Are there certain outfits that you shouldn't wear because they're too skimpy or low-cut and they might lead the men in your life to lust after you? Do you flirt with or dance with guys in a way that might lead them to think less of you than who you really are? Our world desperately needs more women of integrity. Please do whatever it takes to grow in true womanhood. You see, there's different triggers for different people. It's important to be honest about yours and then take practical steps to protect your heart and mind so that these triggers don't cause damage to your soul. On a personal level, I needed to confess to my accountability partners, my wife, and a priest in confession that I found myself surfing channels late at night and watching certain shows that were not good for me. These shows were destructive to my purity because they caused me to look at women as objects and to think of sexuality as something that's merely physical. So these kinds of shows were, and still are, the near occasion of sin for me. All I can say is that it really helps me to make better choices when I know that key people in my life who really care about me might ask me about my late-night viewing habits at any time. Someone once told me that sin is like fungus. 
in that it grows in the dark, but it starts to die when it's in the light. Accountability is one of the ways that we bring our sins into the light so that we can watch them die and then see ourselves begin to live more fully. Drastic measures. In the battle for our souls, we need to desperately want God to win and the devil to lose. And sometimes that demands drastic measures. I know someone who changed to a different cable TV plan so that porn would no longer be available. He removed that near occasion of sin. Other friends have humbly admitted their struggles with impurity to friends, asking to have their TVs or PCs programmed to block out objectionable materials, giving control of the password to an accountability partner. I know teens who have chosen to have their parents help them by asking to have the computer removed from their room and set up in a more public place. I know girls who have encouraged one another as they go out on dates to stay pure. As I became aware of how important accountability is for me, I helped to establish a men's prayer group, which is my accountability group that I attend faithfully. Recently, in this accountability group, we decided to implement a zero-tolerance policy. That is, we will confess to one another if we fail in any way to live a life of moral integrity or sexual purity. What drastic measures might God be calling you to? Might he even be calling you to start an accountability group for your peers? Ask him about that, and then listen up for his direction. Technology can help. Even though technology produces many moral challenges for all of us, there are a lot of ways that technology can help us to be more accountable in living for Christ. We can send our accountability partners emails or texts asking them how they're doing. We can sign up for email lists that contain inspirational thoughts, prayers, Bible verses, or reflections on Christian spirituality. I've installed some free accountability software on all the computers in my home, and it regularly sends an email to accountability partners that reports any visits to objectionable websites. Everyone in our home knows of this software, and it helps people to avoid temptation when they know someone gets a report like this email to them. And to protect my children, I've installed filtering software on the computers they use, which blocks out inappropriate material so they won't accidentally surf onto inappropriate websites. A closing thought. Repent and believe. One of the most basic ways to summarize the gospel message is through these words of Jesus. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. To repent means to admit our sins, confess them, ask for God's forgiveness, trust in his mercy, turn away from sin, and turn toward God. We can do this anytime, not only in our personal prayer time, but also in our relationship with an accountability partner and through the sacrament of reconciliation. To believe means to trust in, cling to, and rely on God. I encourage you to trust in God for everything. Cling to him as your best friend ever and rely on him as you strive to live for him. Don't ever forget that with God, all things are possible, even accountability, especially when we remember the Lone Ranger and an Indian named Tonto.